On the agenda, we, I, we have Mrs. Ms. Fetcho here with us to talk with us about um, actually a new program that's coming to West Reading, and I thought you might enjoy hearing a little bit about the cultural walk that's part of the World Heritage Festival that she's spearheading. So, Ms. Fetcho. Thank you for having me. I just want to tell you briefly about um, what we're doing in sixth grade. I'm a sixth grade social studies teacher. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, we had taken um, a project that they had always done and turned it into a more world culture space because we changed our focus and curriculum from um, North and South America primarily to a world cultures class in sixth grade. And so last year we started the World Heritage um, Festival project where each student does a presentation. Um, and this year as a new addition, we're adding the uh, neighborhood cultural walk. So I just want to give you just the general schedule so you see what's happening in these next two weeks. Um, so May 11th through May 24th, all sixth graders will present their material to their classmates um, on the culture that they investigated, the country of origin, and then some sort of interactive element um, regarding their presentation. And then on May 23rd, we're going to celebrate their success, um, 
Mr. Miller put together the Seven Wonders Tour, so we'll install that in our building, and the kids will walk around and see um, model scale um, wonders of the world. Um, and we also have Alex Meixner Band that's coming. Alex Meixner is a Grammy-nominated, award-winning accordion band player. Um, last year, Wake was able to donate and sponsor that event. This year, PTA is sponsoring that event. Um, and so is the Music Association. They gave us extra dollars to um, have Alex come and do a meet greet for students in addition to playing this year. And what I'm really here then to tell you about, though, is our cultural neighborhood walk. Um, I partnered with Love West Reading Group and Krista Kelly, myself, um, and Bridget Kozak, another sixth grade teacher, work very hard to make community partnerships. And so the students will walk on um, three designated routes, and they will um, stop at these community partners where, where they will then be, um, the partners, the businesses will talk to the students a little bit about the culture of their business, or the culture of their lifestyle, um, and engage them in something experiential for them, and um, to end our walk that day after they stop at these separate places, uh, the Love Western Group has closed down 6th Avenue for us, and Earth Rhythms will do a drum circle presentation. So I hope that um, if you are free, you will join us that day. We'd love to have every one of you with us. Thank you for your time. Some of the things that I think Cammy has been able to do, one of the things, and Jen Mangold, I'm going to call you out, because over the past year, there's really been a connection between the high school and also West Reading in terms of aligning the curriculum. And so I think what Cammy and, and her colleagues have done over at West Reading is really to prepare them for the, once they get up to the high school. So I thank you for that partnership that when you were still in the classroom that you started in reaching over to West Reading and how we're creating that vertical alignment. So I think this is just another example of that. So thank you. Now for the main event of what you all have been waiting for. Um, Mr. Boyer is here this evening. We are in budget season. And so uh, Mr. Boyer has been working diligently um, with the finance committee and with the board to talk about where we are with finances. And so he is here this evening to present the proposed budget to you. Um, yes, we're here. I'm Mark Boyer, I'm the business administrator. We're here to present the proposed final budget for the 16-17 school year. So first I'd like to thank the board. Um, this is the Senate, this is Waller. We spent a lot of time and energy and uh, thought processes going through building this budget. And um, it should, should be uh, hopefully a good 16-17. So let's proceed. Um, first slide here is just our mission and our vision. And so uh, this is essentially our, our base building block for, for whenever we create a budget. This mission and vision not only aligns academics, curriculum, but it aligns the whole entire district. So when we start out for budget, we have to make sure we have the mission, the vision, balance our fiscal responsibility. So we use this as, as our building block for every budget, every budget season. One of our most important tools that we use is enrollment history projections. So the past two years, we did present this projection slide right here. Uh, it's, it's now updated for the new four years of projections, which is off to your right under the gray area. It says projections. One of the most important parts of this is the October 1st box right there. And that October 1st is an important date. October 1st is when the Department of Education requires all schools throughout the Commonwealth to present what their enrollment was as of October 1st. So that's actual data. The actual data is crucial to how we build out this projection sheet. So we create what's called a survival ratio. And that survival ratio is a three-year blended rate from 13, 14, 14, 15, and 15, 16 on the percentage change. It's blended together to get one average change. And then we apply that to the birthing data that we get from the Department of Health. So we look at the number of births in Wyoming and Borough, and Shredding Borough, put them together, do a slight calculation because part of uh, Wyoming and Borough is in the Wilson School District come up with the number of births that we project out for that are going to start kindergarten in 16, 17 school year, and then we apply the survival ratio to that for every year out. As you can see, when you direct it to the bottom where it says total all the way to the right hand side, we are projecting a, an enrollment increase. Why is this one of those school districts in Burst County, one of the few that are having enrollment increases as others that are staying the same or declining. So the main purpose of this tool is not only to see or project where we're going to be, but it's also a tool to say, okay, 
is apply uh, grades K to 6 to our, our board adopted classroom policy for class size and take a look what is our staffing look like for those years. So we, it's a very important tool that helps us with our, our, our staffing and our budget. Budget uncertainties. As every year, there's always budget uncertainties. Even heading into the last final moments going into the budget. And here are some of the key ones. We just spoke about enrollment. It's always an uncertainty. Last year, over the summer, we had an influx of second graders move into the district. That caused us to add a long-term sub for second grade because we had that many uh, students move in. So even though we take a look at projections, projections are only so good when the actual data comes in. And over the summer, we had to add a teacher. The support staff contract we're currently negotiates negotiations with ASME. We have a, a, an assumption built into that contract for wages, but that's, it's, we're still talking economics and, and negotiations. Uh, special, ed edu excuse me, special education costs. You never know who's going to walk through the door. We never know how much that student's going to cost to educate. And that's that's been throughout the Commonwealth. Charter cycles, charter cyber school expenditures. This is key. Our enrollment actually decreased with the number of students in uh, cyber charter schools, but what increased was the cost to educate them. So the, the state derives a formula that says, okay, these are your expenditures, your actual expenditures. Out of your actual expenditures, this is how much you will pay cyber charter school students to, to attend. So as our enrollment has decreased, our tuition costs have increased. And the enrollment decrease has not been as great. So we're basically, this in 16, 17, we are budgeting the same amount for 15, 16, but for 16, 17, we'll buy to increase. Our students 17, 18 months will increase that amount. Healthcare increase. 8.5%, that's the increase on, on what we're currently paying now for, for health care. So as of which last year it was a 3% increase. This year off of 15, 16 to 16, 17, the projection is 8.5%, which is a huge increase compared to where we were. Final numbers come in May 23rd, so hopefully that will drop either a percent or two, it shouldn't go higher. Transportation contract, we're currently in negotiations with our transportation provider and we're still negotiating the economics of that contract also. Revenue uncertainties. Changes in the state budget for 16-17. We're completely in the dark on this one. Uh, for 15-16, you know how that went with, with the budget. It wasn't finally completed until April, in, in which we knew what we were getting as far as our subsidies for 15-16. We really have a little bit of an idea of what Governor Wolf is proposing. But what actually transpires are two different things as we know from 15 16. So that's a huge uncertainty. Basic education funding revenue formula. So this is a new formula that the state, when they passed the fiscal code, put, in, 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 put into, um, into play with how they divvy out the basic education funding. A similar uh, formula went through last year with special education. And what it essentially does is it baselines the revenue. So 14 15 is our baseline. Will not go lower than 1415. But for all new monies coming out, it gets put through this formula, which is a bunch of different percentages and analytics um, that the money runs through, and then you get the final result. So, truth be told, we actually got more money using this formula than the governor's original formula that he had passed, which is great. Ready to learn grant. This was a grant that was brought forth through the corporate administration, which is another challenge to increase funding through school districts. Um, the reason this is an uncertainty is because every year we don't know if we're going to get it, and if we do get it, we don't know how much it's going to be. And actually looking at what uh, Governor Wolf is proposing in 1617, looks like this grant is going to morph into uh, basic education funding. It's probably going to go away. Access funding. Access funding is a drawdown of medical assistance funds that we actually run through our uh, special education costs. We apply for so much money, we get a percentage of that back to be able to draw down. And we're looking to draw down uh, the majority of those funds uh, in 1670. The overview, where are we right now? Okay, revenue budget right now without a tax increase proposed or without use of any fund balance 
We're at a $33.4 million revenue budget. The expenditure budget is $33.9 million. That leaves a, a deficit of $575,430. How are we going to close this gap? And we're going to dive right into it. Let's talk about revenues. So of that $33 million, our local revenues is $27.04 million, which is 80.56% of our total budget. A huge portion of our budget. Where are local sources? Real estate taxes, interim taxes, uh, business privilege tax. Uh, anything we tax is part of this um, the source right here. And the big source is real estate tax. How do we get real estate taxes? Off of our assessed value. Our assessed value, again, like last year and the previous year, have, has decreased. Um, point, uh, decreased uh, a small amount at 0.021%, which is about $53,000. So it's still less tax money than we were getting. So we are proposing a tax increase, a tax increase of 0.95%. Our Act 1 index is which no limit that we can tax to is 2.4%. The millage rate at 0.95% would go from 29.7836 to 30.0665. So what does that mean for an assessed value, of, excuse me, a property assessed at $150,000, the increase would be $42. State sources. Of that 30, $33 million, $5.99 million, or 17.63%, is from the state. And the bigger contributions are basic ed, special ed, and ready to learn grant. You see there on the slide are our 15, 16 revenue numbers. That is what we're, we will be getting from the state. We're using those numbers in our 16, 17 budget because we have no idea of what 16, 17 is going to bring as far as from the government, or excuse me, the governor. The leg legislators are going to approve. Retirement reimbursement. We do receive a subsidy from the state for retirement reimbursement. It's 50% of our expense. As the retirement increases, which it is, our expense is going from 25.84% to 30.03%. We'll get more revenue from that. But it's only derived because our expense went up. Federal sources. $524,000, or 1.56% of our total budget. The great news about this is Title I funding came in, some preliminary numbers were, will be receiving an increase. But because they're preliminary, we're only going to budget 0.75% of the increase. So we're a little conservative on this, but that number can change. So we are increasing Title I. We don't have any information yet on Title II and Title III. So it's based upon the 15-16 allocations. Medical assistance, we spoke about that in an earlier slide. We're going to draw down a uh, majority of that money to help help close or help uh, close the gap. Revenue history. This slide is just a, a basic history of our revenue budget. Actually, I just want to bring your attention to the far right, 15-16. Our projections are bringing in that we're going to be basically right on budget with our revenue. Expenditure assumptions. All salaries are budgeted in accordance with employee existing wage agreements except for the AFSCME contract. We built an assumption in there for that. Medical insurance contract. Excuse me. 8.5%. We spoke about that earlier. It's 8.5% increase where we currently are now. Uh, employee retirement. We spoke about that. 25.84% is where we are right for our retirement percentage. It's going up to 30.03%. 1.19% increase, about $710,000. The net of that is $355,000. And then use of fund balance. We have some unassigned fund balance and assigned uh, fund balance specifically for retirement or users that we're going to propose using to close the gap. Uh, let's just talk about some personnel changes that are occurring. Uh, there's a couple of them. The top one, um, because of our enrollment projections, we're going to, we are projecting that we're going to need an additional uh, kindergarten, or excuse me, uh, <coughs> elementary school position at the hills. So that's going to increase our budget. We're going to zero budget for 16-17 uh, banking psychologist position, which decreases our budget. We had a couple of resignations, which will decrease our budget. Uh, we had a retirement, which will decrease our budget. And then the bottom one is a van driver. That position is currently vacant. We have five. Uh, positions right now, we typically only fill four when we're full staff, we're not full staff right now, so we're going to uh, uh, 
basically zero budget that uh, that uh, make the target position. Some key changes. I just want to uh, focus on the, the highlighted items there. So raising taxes will give us about two hundred eighteen thousand dollars of additional tax revenue. We're looking to um, use two hundred ninety-two thousand of the committed fund balance for PEASERS and unassigned fund balance at sixty-six thousand dollars will be using to draw down. There's two more items on here that I'd like to point out. The use of bond refinancing savings. The board made the wise decision to refinance the bond at the right time, which is going to save us about $153,000 in debt service. And then with the, um, the Hills project, the ESCO project, we have a guaranteed energy savings of $71,000 that we're also going to be capturing in, in this budget. So the current, current stats, let's review. We're at $33.4 million in revenue, $33.9 in expenditures, Five hundred seventy-five thousand in, in uh, a deficit. So what we're looking at for the proposed final is a revenue budget of thirty-three million six hundred eighteen thousand and an expansion budget of thirty-three million six hundred thousand. So we would basically balance the budget. So those three key components in that last slide help balance that budget of five hundred seventy-five thousand. Point nine five percent tax increase and use of uh, committed fund balance for PEASERS and use of unassigned fund balance for um, just, just to close that gap of our uh, regular unassigned fund balance. This chart is an expenditure history. We're going to go into a few charts of just kind of where we are and how our expenditures are made up. So I just want you to, to focus on 14-15 here. We had a budget to actual, we had a huge, uh, our actual was exceeded our budget and that was because we used committed fund balance to uh, pay for a lease, uh, we'll actually pay off the lease, purchase a new lawn tractor, uh, we had some curriculum enhancements that we did, and then uh, we purchased transportation software. Uh, this is a, a graph that just basically shows total revenue and total expenditures uh, for budget history. The final two years here, there's a gap between our revenue and our expenditures. Uh, last year we also used Fund balance, unassigned fund balance, or projected to use unassigned fund balance of $135,000. Uh, we don't believe for our projections we're going to need to use that money at all. Uh, but then I just may mention that we will be using fund balance again to help uh, close the gap up on the budget. Uh, these are just pie charts basically breaking down our, our expenditures by program. As you can see, 55% of our budget is directed to instruction. So instruction is teacher salaries, all the supplies used in the classrooms, anything related to students. This is a breakdown of basically where we are by object. So six, over 60% of our entire budget goes to salaries and benefits. It's a, it's a huge, huge, huge number right there. This is just a slide of where our projected ending fund balance should be for 16-17. I just want to point out two lines here. PEASERS will be down to 3.9 million. We are currently at 4.1 million. So using that 272,000, we'll draw that down a little bit. And then unassigned fund balance is at 2.79. We are projecting a very small surplus of $240,000 at the end of 1516 as of right now. That could change. But that money is built into that unassigned fund balance right there. This is a good, a really good chart of kind of where we were for our millage history. I just want to direct everyone to the bottom line here. That's where we're proposing our millage to be at 30.0665. It's a 0.2816 increase in mills. It's a 0.95% increase. Our index is 2.4. The past three years, we went from a 1.7% increase to a 1.5 to a 1% increase. So we're, we're really working hard, the board is working hard to keep that tax increase well. One other key point here is that this proposed tax increase at 0.95% would be the lowest tax increase since 1999 to 2000 where it was 0%. We are working very hard to not have large tax increases. Real estate tax increase summary. This chart, I just want to bring this chart to see what the difference is in the tax revenue. So at 0.95% we bring about $213,000. At 2.4%, we bring about $540,000. So 2.4 is our tax index, and going higher than that. Another good key chart. This is a chart of the, the county millage rates for the 18 school districts in Berks County as of 1516. 
So it's in alphabetic order, it's not in ranking order. I will tell you that Kutztown right here is at 29.9543 village rate. We're at 29.7836. Kutztown is fifth in the county. When we increase our taxes by 0.95 to that 30.0665, we will be fifth in the county as far as tax village. Kutztown is not projecting to increase their tax at all this year. But the key part of this chart right here is this column right here. This is our BEF funding for 1516. I'm going to draw your eyes down to the bottom right hand corner here. We get 1.3 million from the state. 1.3 million. School district our size, comparable to Schuylkill Valley School District, 2.55. So there's a good correlation between tax increase and basic education funding. That's my cue to add something. So, the, the BEF funding formula that you hear us talking about, <clears throat> it's a basic education funding formula. This has been, if you've been re following the media, there's been a change in this. And there have been some, what they call circuit riders, who are retired educators and some board members, retired, who are active, who are going across the state and educating people about what this basic education funding formula actually is. And there has been a press in Harrisburg to try and change this so that school districts are more fairly funded. And this is really what, what Mr. Boyer is showing you, the disparity across Berks County. So the circuit riders have been coming to speak with the superintendents, have been going into school districts. And as Mark and I have been working on the budget, we have invited one of the circuit riders to be here during our next school board meeting um, to just kind of educate us on what goes into this funding formula and how what can we do as a community as a school board in terms of advocacy to start looking at a fair funding formula so Sandra Miller Tom Seidenberger is actually our regional circuit writer he's not available to be here but Sandra Miller who is a board member with the Saucon Valley School District up in Lehigh Valley will be here to, to talk to us and just kind of explain what this basic education funding formula is as well as some advocacy points in what we can do as a community to start bringing more attention to this. So I thought as you're looking at this slide, this would be an appropriate time to do a little infomercial for the next school board meeting. I've, I've spoken with her. Um, she's extremely knowledgeable about this, and so we look forward to inviting her in to talk with us about that. Thank you. So it is a be great to have that explained, uh, kind of get more inside the new formula. There's a lot of factors that go into that formula, and it's a little confusing, but it could shed light on why, maybe why we're at one point three versus a uh, higher rate. Uh, this slide here is we spoke about using the uh, committed fund balance for, for our fees and our, our retirement. So right now we're at four point one million dollars in, in that account or in that that commitment. Projecting to use 292,000, bring that down a little bit. We're, if we would use that in compounds over the years, we're looking at basically the school year 21, 22, where we'd start to run out of money for that commitment. We're not adding anything anymore. Um, so we have a couple of years. Hopefully, we're not going to continue this use of using that fund balance, but it is there for us to use as we kind of reach whenever the state decides to stop going down the road and settle on a uh, final number that we're looking at contribution-wise. We're almost there. Uh, the peak, right now, the peak percentage is about 33%. We'll be at 30%. So about two years, we'll peak up and they'll flatline, is what the projection is. But every year we've gone through this, that has gotten further and further out as far as when we get the final number. And that concludes the uh, the uh, folks right now. So, thanks. Okay, we can move on to committee reports. Um, Mr. Zappos, did you have anything to add to finance? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. Um, good evening. Again, thank you, Mark, for, for all this. Um, uh, I'm going to report on the uh, finance committee that we have last week, which we discussed uh, and reviewed the 2016-17 budget uh, and the fund balance and the 0.9% tax increase. And uh, again, wow. Uh, we also discussed budget transfers for about $337. We discussed the waste grant in the amount of uh, 
$1,160 uh, for the Special Olympics. Uh, again, we reviewed the copier lease analysis. Uh, we went through, I think it was five, was it six different companies. Uh, uh, narrowed it down from the amount of paper we're using to the amount of copier machines. Uh, and we will have a vendor in contract at the second meeting in May. And I think we're right there uh, from the last report. So it's a good savings. I think it was about, what, $7,000 savings, $7,300. Year. Okay. Which is still good. Still good. Still good. Got it. Um, and that's basically all we, we discussed. This was the, the meat and potatoes of it, though. Oh, yeah. Um, we had a meeting on May 4th, and um, <laughs> under current projects, we discussed the football field fence project. Um, ELA is revising the plans to include the tennis courts, uh, reduce the number of columns, and change the setback of the fence from three feet to six feet. Uh, secondly, we discussed the facility storage building. Um, at our last meeting, we had approved going forward with that. Um, currently, AEM, the architects, they're working on the design and waiting for renderings. AEM expects to have the bid documents prepared to advertise in mid to late July. Uh, tennis court update. There is a meeting this week to discuss storm water. Last week. Last week. It was last week. So yeah. okay. um, to discuss the storm water plan. Uh, Turf Track and Field is preparing the bid documents and anticipates advertising the project in early July. It seems um, that it's a very, very good possibility that it will, the project will be completed by the end of this year. Um, Lastly, in current projects, is the district-wide camera upgrade, which we've hit a little bit of a snafu in the high school just because of the age of the building in the 1938 section. Um, it's more of a, an exterior issue. Um, currently, all three of the schools, the interior cameras, are working and set up. Um, I, I think it, you know it's more of a delay just in, in technique. It, it hasn't added any additional cost to the project. So um, I think they're just kind of slowly getting through that and it will get done, it's just taking a little longer. And that wasn't completely unanticipated. Um, there was also a little discussion at the end about the installation of an exterior camera at the hills by door four. Um, Mr. Cappincelli is gonna look into it and we'll continue to discuss that. Um, under new business, uh, we had talked about last month um, Mrs. Phillips and the Environmental Club uh, wanted to landscape the area by the stairs going down to the turf track. Um, there was a question of who was going to maintain it. Uh, they were contacted and Mrs. Phillips said that the club would be responsible for maintaining the, the plantings. Um, we had a floor scrubber that was very old and it broke and can't be replaced. So. At this point right now, we're looking at new scrubbers um, that are more efficient and can be used to both strip and scrub the floors. This will be a huge savings in time, as right now, they're manually by hand stripping the floors. So um, Mr. Capanzelli is looking at uh, devices that can be transported to all of the schools and that will do both. So it will be a huge savings in time. Um, right now, we're looking at maybe uh, eight to ten thousand um, dollars but he'll get multiple pricing for that um, another discussion was the sound system at the football field uh, the current system is antiquated and um, we're going to look at replacing the system with new outdoor speakers and a wireless microphone <coughs> mr. Cavanselli is in the process of getting quotes um, right now it looks to be around $8,000, which seems to be the magic number. Um, we discussed uh, possibly looking to get some donations from some of the teams that use the field. Uh, we'll continue to discuss this at the next meeting. Um, the last thing, and this was sort of the, the, the bigger issue that we talked about in the meeting is, um, and as we've discussed often, the age of this building and the problems that we have with our controls and our HVAC system. Um, 
the controls at the high school, one of the main control components, died and cannot be replaced because of its age. Um, so that control is an old NRG, is the company that maintains that control. Um, it, the question is, do we, do we repair that or do we um, go with train, because we have already have some controls that were put in, and um, train can put a band-aid on this until we can delve deeper into doing this remodel in the next couple of years of our whole system. Um, Mr. Capitelli has been working with train. They're pretty um, confident that they can get it fixed. As it stands right now, it's working. It just has to be run manually, so someone has to sit in the control room and while people are in the school and manually um, control the temperature. So clearly that's not optimal. So I don't know if you have an update on that, because if this was last week, are you still? We're still reviewing options. We should have a recommendation for it. Okay. Um, lastly, we also discussed uh, Flannery Field and kind of did a bit of a wish list of things that, that, that we'd like to get improved over there. Um, one is there's a ripple in the track in lane four. Um, I think once uh, track is over, they're going to try to roll that out. It wouldn't be that big of a deal, and hopefully it solves the problem. Um, further and kind of greater issues there, there's some real uh, parts of the fence that need to be uh, fixed. Um, also the lines need to be repainted and um, there was some talk about possibly providing heating and cooling in the locker rooms. There, again, this is all a wish list. We'll continue looking at this, but we are discussing it. So we'll keep moving on with that. And that's it. Um, we talked about uh, they are adding another book for the 8th grade reading list. We had decided on it last month, but there was a little bit of overlap from, I think, the 6th grade program. So um, Mrs. Waller over the summer is going to meet with representatives for K-12 through to kind of put together one giant reading list so that there's some continuity among the different schools. Um, the curriculum and textbook cycle has been completely updated. Um, and departments are going to start curriculum revisions over the summer. We talked about the work outside of the contract hours for teachers. Um, the overall hours will remain the same from previous years, but some will shift where some departments didn't quite use all their hours. Um, other departments have been given those hours um, that kind of need the extra hours for the summer, but no change in financial need for that. Um, the three-hour delay plan, which is not a substitute for the two-hour delay plan, and we're going to vote on that tonight. Um, they put together plans for two-hour delay, three-hour delay, and also early dismissals. So if that is approved tonight, then we will go ahead and start relaying that information to parents so that we can start it up next year if need be. Um, we are going to, they would like to change Summer Reading Academy to just Summer Academy, which will allow um, us to have more flexibility and provide students with support in both math and reading as opposed to just being a reading program. Um, there will be no extra cost by doing that, so seems like a no brainer. Um, and then the ESSA stakeholder work group. Um, Mrs. Waller has been selected by the Pennsylvania Department of Education to participate <coughs> on the ESSA stakeholder work group um, with the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Their four focus work group. Um, Work groups are assessment, accountability, educator certification, and educator evaluation. There will be three additional meetings scheduled between now and October, and their goal is to use 16-17 um, as the transition period, and then ESSA will go into effect for 2017-18 school year. That's all. Um, the technology committee met May 5th, and we, at the Junior Senior High School 1 to 1 initiative, we reviewed that, which included technical upgrades, updates, repairs, year end updates, and it was also noted that we had a 100% success rate with the AP Spanish exam online. We then reviewed technology at West Reading and the Hills, and it was noted that we're opening discussion with the teachers to look at matching curriculum. There was a meeting scheduled to obtain teacher feedback, 
and we're looking at applying lessons learned at the high school to discuss how we go further at those two schools with the vision before actual implementation. There were updates provided on infrastructure and looking at the throughout the building for growth. Also updates on continuing to make district-wide um, website improvements with the goal of increasing district communication and providing better user experience. Under technical support, it was noted that they were, were close to filling the technician position, which has not been filled. Okay. Um, beginning to interview for college interns for next year. Also reviewed the audio recordings, which we've gotten some very positive feedback, and also um, Mr. Ernst added another microphone to assist with hearing the voting. Uh, we're meeting with the teachers to demonstrate. Um, oh, lastly, um, we showed a teacher demonstration of the iPads at the Hills where they were utilizing Kahoot, allowing them to do an interactive answer multiple choice questions for their Colonial Days lesson plan. Is that? Uh, personnel, Mr. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the personnel committee met on May 4th at 12 noon. I would direct your attention to the items that were from your agenda, the personnel items. In addition, we did discuss the county services agreement uh, for our substitutes. Uh, we did authorize the administration to go forward and further investigate that matter, uh, which they are doing. I uh, expect you'll see an item on our agenda next month for our services. It's also a discussion item on the finance facility so again. Thank you. Thank you. Keep on going. We have a number of policies here for first read. Uh, first, we have 626 and the attachments. These are required policies uh, relative to requirements of the Uniform Grant Guidance. Uh, it's more or less how we deal with the federal government, I believe, in connection with grants. They're very detailed requirements. The bottom line, these, these are all required to deal with the federal government in grants. Uh, in addition, they are consistent with our current policy procedures. We need to match up the policies to our procedures. We're also going to see a couple of related policies here. Uh, the first is policy 820, I'm sorry, 808, 808, which relates to food services. Again, the same issue dealing with the Department of Agriculture. The other policy that is somewhat related is 827 relative to conflicts of interest. This discusses a situation where a board member or a district employee has some kind of relationship with a potential vendor and more or less prohibits that relationship from leading that vendor to obtaining the contract in question. Uh, again, I believe this also kind of derives from 626 and is kind of connected to that relative to dealing with the federal government. Final policy is number 823, Nalazo. We're adopting this policy. We did get a policy for PSPA with recommended provisions. We also discussed it with our school nurse and also with our school doctor to ensure that everything is in place for us to administer this drug. Uh, more or less, this is a, uh, it counteracts the effects of opiates. Uh, so again, we feel it's important to have this available for our school nurse and all, and really, just trained personnel. There's required training for to, to administer an Alizone, and the individuals who have access to it will receive the appropriate training. In addition, we discussed some of other policies, 123.1 related to interscholastic athletic, athletic coaches, 218 related to student discipline, and 233 related to suspension and expulsion. We will likely see some changes to those policies next week. Thank you very much, Mr. <coughs> ad hoc committee report. Um, on May 2nd, we had the last scheduled ad hoc meeting. Mr. Bruner, a Wyoming Borough Council member, attended the meeting to share the borough's position on Mr. Rodriguez's proposed plan for the reapportion of Wyoming Area School District to a regional plan for electing school board members. The Wyoming Borough Council passed, resolu passed a resolution opposing the plan, and um, Mr. Bruner provided the, a copy of the resolution to the committee. 
The remainder of the meeting was used to review the report and finalize the recommendations. The report reviews the timeline of events leading up to the creation of the committee, community input, as well as election data for regional and at-large districts in Berks County from 2003 to 2015, and Wyoming Area School District uh, School Director primary election data from 2003 to 2015. Um, the committee finds that there is a perception that the interests of West Reading are not represented by the Wyoming Area School Board of Directors. However, we believe that through past actions, West Reading is indeed represented as an integral part of the district. The committee senses that this has been a long-standing issue since the merging of West Reading and Wyoming School Districts, and there have been hurt feelings between residents of both boroughs. Our goal as a committee is to bring our communities together, not further divide them. We don't believe that changing the electoral system will remedy these issues, and it is not the most effective way to address the problem. It is apparent from the data that qualified West Reading residents who run for school board can be successful in elections. However, there is a lack of interested candidates within West Reading. The committee believes that the board needs to begin with a grassroots effort to educate potential school board candidates in the election process first before, dis before fully disrupting our current electoral system. It is important to allow all of our voters the option to choose from a large pool of qualified candidates who they feel best represent our community as a whole. It is the recommendation of the ad hoc committee to address the lack of West Reading residents on the board by developing a comprehensive program designed to identify candidates for school board, support residents who choose to run, and provide resources to them throughout the electoral process. These resources would include a web page on the district website that outlines the timeline and deadlines for running, links to online resources such as the Pennsylvania School Board Association website, Berks County Elections website, links to filing petitions, and seminars with current board members for Q&A about running for school board and the role and responsibilities of school directors. The committee also recommends monitoring the board's outreach efforts to get more West Reading residents to run by reviewing the efficacy of the efforts after the municipal elections in 2017 and 2019. Changes will be made to improve the outreach based on the board's review. Wyoming Area School District offers an excellent education to the children of both West Reading and Wyoming. It is a nationally ranked, it is nationally ranked by several organizations, and last year, Wyoming Area School District performed above the state average on every PSSA test in every grade level that was tested. The board is very reluctant to change an election plan for school directors that has been able to seat boards that support such a successful district. The board takes such a huge change to the plan of electing school directors very seriously and feels that an effort to encourage more residents to run and to provide comprehensive support to those residents should be tried before we disrupt a system that has produced, produced very capable boards and an excellent school district for the entire community. So that report in its entirety um, is in the board packet. Um, all the supporting documents of all of our research is also there. And I would like to thank Mrs. Feiler personally because the stack of documents was about two inches thick and she had to scan it all and label it and organize it for the report. So she was very supportive to me and the committee um, last week when I put all that on her lap. So thank you very, very much. Um, and I have Berks County Intermediate Unit. I was unable to attend the meeting, so I don't have a report. So I'll move on to BCTC, Mr. Painter. Thank you. Uh, we had a meeting on Wednesday, uh, April 27th at Red Deer Community College. Of note is that we reported that all of the 16 sending districts did approve the budget. Uh, so next month, uh, BCTC will and I'll like to approve that budget for me. Uh, so thank you. Uh, and it was interesting to note that we met at Red Deer Community College and we toured the <coughs> mechatronics uh, classrooms, I guess you would call it, which is kind of amazing. Mechatronics is, from my perspective, a, a combination of, uh, of robotics, computers, uh, science. I mean, it really is fantastic. And we, we took a presentation from uh, the college, and, and they informed us of all of the programs available at Rivera Community College that tie into BCTC and even high schools to a lesser extent, that allow you to get started in your education at a very, well, actually, no cost get a college grants for no cost. And uh, there are many, many programs available. And uh, let's see what they can do. Thank you. Uh, 
We have not had a meeting, so I have no Just one item to note on the agenda that's um, to vote tonight, which already was mentioned with the grant for the Spartan Challenge for our Why Missing education, Special Education students for $1,160. And as far as upcoming meetings, the WAVE Board meets tomorrow. There's a scholarship celebration on Wednesday, the 11th. And one last push for the principal's party toast on May 13th. And it's still online and it's still not too late to um, register. Is there anyone in the audience who has a comment tonight? Could you please step up to the microphone and state your name and address? Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Mark Proudfoot, 1410 Old Mill Road. Um, I've raised some safety issues, uh, Wi-Fi radiation for the last three years. And I'm not really uh, satisfied with the actions that are being taken place. Um, Ms. Riley's been responding to my letters, but I, I'm just wondering if the rest of the board is aware of the questions and the answers being given. Are you involved at all, or is it just one person who's dealing with me? Um, you stated that you were are committed to keeping up with the latest research and development uh, understanding of Wi-Fi and possible health issues. And um, I'm wondering who's doing that because I gave you current research that shows that, that uh, Wi-Fi causes production of free radicals in your cells. And this is known to cause all sorts of problems like cancer, aging, and so forth. So who's, who's doing this checking the <coughs> research because that's an obvious red flag that we should be very worried about. It. Two years ago, the board said that they agreed that we should measure the strength of the radiation of the fields in our classrooms. Um, it was handed off to one of your people and it was basically blocked. So no measurement's ever been done. Um, once again, I'm going to offer, we have equipment, Willing to do it myself, no cost to the board. We can measure what the levels are. Perhaps we'll find there's no problems. Perhaps we'll find there's an issue. And once we have some information, we can actually do something about it. At this point, I think we're just keeping our heads in the sand and hoping it'll just go away. So I'd, I'd appreciate if we could get a response from the board uh, regarding these issues safety, the current RD, and secondly, and we measure what's going on in the school. Uh, one last issue, uh, we're going to be increasing the taxes. Coincidentally, about 75% of that is gonna to go to making more iPads for the middle school. I think that we've not shown the benefits of the iPads. In fact, all our PSSAs are going downhill very quickly. Uh, I don't know if it's related to the iPads, but it is a big impact on the schools. So if we can't prove that it's good for the students, the results are not showing it. Why should we rush into doing more farther downstream for the younger kids? And tonight I heard that we're going to, we have a vision for doing it also in the grade school, which I think is crazy, but that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Under curriculum and technology, it is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve the following curriculum and technology items number one through four. May I have a motion, please? So Second. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Filer, can I have roll call, please? Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mrs. Riley. Yes. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Waxley. Yes. Mr. Zeppos. Yes. Mrs. Zilkowski. Under finance and facilities, it, it is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve the following finance and facility items number one and two. May I have a motion, please? So Second. So is there any discussion? Yes. Sorry, I'm 
Um, so I just have two questions, and maybe Mr. Horry can answer this. Um, the surplus that we have from this year, is there any way to use that money to alleviate the tax increase and the deficit? Um, actually, we, we, we have a little bit. So we did put that into unassigned fund balance. So I mentioned in that last line there, the fourth or fifth last slide. So we actually did put that 240000 in unassigned fund balance. So we are using essentially $370,000 of fund balance to keep that tax rate as low as we possibly can. I'm sorry, one more question. With the state budget unknown, my only concern is we can't undo a tax increase. And I know that puts us in a, in a predicament because who knows when the, the 16, 17 budget will be approved and we have expenditures that need to be taken care of now. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there and see if anybody else has any comments or suggestions. Thank you. <coughs> It's actually a great question. So, um, amongst other school districts, now that we're comparing ourselves to other school districts, um, there has been a, a, a great discussion about what to use as far as to put in the budget for revenue for the state budget part. So, the majority of the school districts are using 15, 16 numbers because it's more conservative. You make a good point. We do get an increase. The increase is significant. You can do a tax increase. So. There was about two school districts that were using 16, 17 numbers, and, and they were fairly large districts. So, um, but the majority is in, we just feel more comfortable at this point not doing that, because if that money doesn't come to fruition and we don't tax to what we're taxing at now, we're going to be in a revenue deficit then. Finance and facility items are for discussion. Number three through ten. Are there any questions? Moving on to personnel and policy, it is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve the following personnel and policy items numbered one through nine. May I have a motion, please? Second. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Fyler, can I have a call, please? Mrs. Taylor? Yes. Mrs. Waxler? Yes. Mr. Zepos? Yes. Mrs. Zokowski? Yes. Mrs. Larkin? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Redmond? Yes. Mrs. Reese? Yes. Mrs. Riley? Yes. Nine, yes. Mrs. Yes. 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 Um, on behalf of the school board, I would like to thank Dr. Kuhn for the two years he has given the Hills. We wish him much success at Upper Marion. So thank you. It's the battle of the mics. <laughs> and we also, as an administrative team, Dr. Kuhn, wish to thank you for your years of service. Uh, we wish you well as you move on to Upper Marion and ensure that you will have a positive influence as you walk the halls of Upper Marion as you did with the hills. Our community thanks you for your service and so does our um, And also, um, I've only heard positive words about Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Evans. So thank you very much uh, for your work with the district. And I believe Mr. Arns. Wants to say something? Yeah, just, just a quick word. Thank you, Mrs. Riley. Thank you, Mrs. Vicente. Thank you to, to all the school board members. Uh, I just want to express my appreciation for supporting the in Information Technology Department's internship program. Uh, the technical and the soft skills that Kyle, Eric, and Darmendra developed while working here uh, have prepared them well for their professional careers. I was able to attend their graduation ceremony Saturday morning. And uh, it was a real pleasure to hear them all say what a great experience they had while here at the Wine Missing Area School District. Um, I also feel it's important to, to acknowledge the caliber of students that the Penn State Berks campus is preparing for us. Um, and honestly, 
I look forward um, to continuing our relationship with them and utilizing the internship program again next year. So thank you. Much appreciated. And we also would like to recognize Mr. Lance Palmer, who is in the audience with us this evening. He is the latest member of the... Yeah, you do have to sit yeah, in <laughs> And so he is our new technology systems technician. He's um, taking the place of Mr. Hennessy, who had resigned from the district. And so we want to welcome Mr. Palmer to the Wyoming Area School District. So welcome. And we need to also, are there any questions? I looked at the agenda and wondered where we were. Are there any um, additional questions on the policies um, or discussion items? Uh, is there any old business? Any new business? Any updates? Oh, sorry. 